Come on, how many know God is not done doing good in our lives? And how many are thankful for that this morning? Who's ready for a great word today? I just want to remind you, Dr. Dave Martin, he's coming all the way from Detroit. He's really not just a guest here. He's part of the family now. And he's coming to impart within us. But today you're going to get part one. Some say part one. Tonight is really part two. But tonight is not just any night. Tonight is the kind of night that normally he would travel, he would charge for conferences for, but he's giving that free to us as a church. So let's clear our calendars, let's show up, and let's receive what God has for us tonight. But also, let's receive what God has for us this morning. Let's give a big Way World Outreach welcome to Dr. and Pastor Dave Martin. Come on. Oh, good morning. I mean, glad you came to church today. Hey, if you're, if you're really glad, find someone next to you. Find the, find the best looking person you can. Well, find someone really good looking. When you look right at them, look right at them. Tell them this. Tell them the rest of your life. All right, let's try it again. I think you can do a lot better than that. Look at your second choice. Look at you. Okay, just, how about this? Point to yourself. Point to yourself. Say the rest of my life will be the best of my life. We've been in our series, Abundant Life. How many believe the rest of your life could be the best of your life? You're taking these principles. The pastor's been teaching us so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. You know, this, this season uh, of the year is one of my favorite seasons. I always love uh, uh, football season and um, I was watching a game the other day and I saw in the last few minutes of the last quarter a team came back and accomplished more than they did the whole first part of the game and ended up winning the game I thought in the last few minutes of the last quarter they did more than, than, than they did the whole rest of the, of the game here we are right now November the last few minutes of the last quarter of 2023. And I think God's still got some great things to do this year. He's not done with you this year. He's not done with our church this year. I believe we're gonna see more people say yes to Jesus this year. We're gonna see, God, say this with me. Say the rest of my year will be the best of my year. Hey, but you can be seated. I'm gonna get you to say that as much as I can. The rest of our, well, I don't, I, we just got to finish strong this year. God's still got a lot to do this year. Some people get in that, well, you know, it's the end of the year. We got Thanksgiving next week and then the holidays. We'll just kind of, just kind of coast through the rest of this year. But I'm, I'm believing here at the way we are going to finish strong. We're going to finish strong as we go into the rest of this year. I mean, we got uh, uh, the offering coming up on December the 10th. Now, how many glad you're a part of a church that has incredible vision to help other people? This pastor was just sharing all that's, all that's happened. I, I was reminded of the scripture. Uh, it, by the way, Pomona and, and Arrowhead and I love the, L, the way LA. I just think that just has, has a cool, I came up with a song last service for their new theme song. The way LA, the way LA. Anyway, uh, come on everybody behind me, let's, isn't that a Congo line or something? Anyway, uh, and I didn't forget you, Arizona and Arrowhead. I said them all, I think. Well, don't make me come over there. If I didn't say your name, just come on. Come, come on, put your hands together and welcome all of our different campuses. Come on. And all over the world on our online. So awesome. Isn't it awesome to be a, a part of a church that's just reaching beyond what where we are right here with so many lives are being changed. We're glad you're joining us wherever you're at. And, uh, uh, but, but I'm looking at the vision as pastor was sharing that there's a scripture that says where there is no vision, people perish. And I got to thinking as we just looked at what happened just this week of hundreds of families that were ministered to uh, hundreds of baskets of Thanksgiving meals that were given away lives that were changed people that were not perishing because God gave us a vision here at the way. How many love your church and are thankful we have a vision 
And how could you not love your church when you have pastors? How many love your pastor? That, that, man, what a, how could you not love your church? And, but you know, you could also flip that scripture around and say where there are no people, the vision will perish. Because to, to feed all those people, to get those baskets ready, took a lot of people. To people that were serving, uh, to prepare them, serving, to pack them, serving the meals, preparing the meals. Took people to give. To make it all happen. So it takes a lot of people. And now we look at what's, what we got to do. We got to get the bungalow ready so we can train more people, equip more people for the work of God. And, and we got the homes for the men and the women. Get that other one uh, paid off. We got so much to do. Uh, how, many, how many say, you know what, man, if I had an extra 50000 I sure would love to give it to help get all this done. How many, how many love to be, hey, how many, how many say, put me down for 50000 How many... How many, it's not, listen, the offering is not till December. I'm just asking right now. It's, a, it's not a pledge or anything. How many like to be able to do that? How many like, yeah, okay. Some of y'all got nervous. You're like, is this the offering? No, no, I'm just, I'm just seeing where your heart is. Because, you know, where your, where your heart is, your treasure is, your, you give to the things that you love. I, I love to give. And I, I love every, every year. Of course, we honor God with our tithe and offering. But then every year we have these special uh, moments where we really get to stretch our faith and do something uncommon, something different, and, and something to move God's church forward. We're going to move the church forward a long ways through our generosity here in just a couple of weeks on that special day. So I, I encourage you, as Pastor said, be praying. What does God have you to do? I, I know every year when we do that at our church, and I, I pray, God, what would you have me do this year? Every, every year it seems like he's stretching me just a little bit more than he did the year before. But, but how many enjoy giving? How many enjoy giving? How many, how, many, how many like to be able to give more than you do right now? Yeah, most of us. I mean, God created us that way. For God so loved the world that he gave, right? He created us in his image. So we were created to be givers. And, and, and I, I grew up in church and we, we learned about tithe and offering. You know, we didn't learn a lot about generosity, because that's what this is. It's a moment of generosity. We learned about tithe and offering. I mean, my dad taught us, well, you better pay your tithe or God will kill you. That's how we, but we, we didn't learn the joy of giving. We, to us, God was like the godfather of the mafia. And tithe was like protection money. Just give God his money, he won't break your legs, you know. We didn't see all the vision and get to be excited about something like that. And, and I remember when God really began to deal with my heart about this life of generosity beyond just obeying him with my tithe and giving on a regular basis, but those moments to really stretch my faith a little bit. It's like working out, right? Faith, when you give, like what we're going to do on December 10th, it takes faith to do that because you're taking above and beyond your normal and, and giving, you're stretching your faith. And, and, and faith is a muscle, right? I mean, if you want to grow a muscle, what do you do? Exercise it. You stretch it, right? And so we're going to get to stretch our faith muscle a little bit. It's, it's like um, if I want to, if I want to bench, you know, you say, man, if I had 50,000, I'd love to give it. Maybe it's 500. I don't know what your amount will be that's a stretch for you, but uh, it, it's like working out. I don't just go in the gym the first day and go, okay, I'm going to bench press 500 pounds. No, I, I'm not going to start. Maybe that might be my goal, but I might start with a hundred, make sure I can do it. Once I got a hundred pounds, what am I going to do? I'm going to add a little weight on the end and get it up to, to 150. And then I'm going to add a little weight on the end and get it up to 200. So I remember years ago setting a goal of, of giving. And, and I, I've worked my way up over the years. I remember the first time I gave $100. Above my normal tithe, just honoring God, I gave a, an extra $100, like on a special day like we're going to do December 10th. That was huge. I remember the first time I stretched it and I gave two. I remember the first time it was 500. That was huge for me. It was actually, that's how much my wife and I, at the time, my wife and I made $500 a week combined. We lived in a little government assisted apartment at the time, a little section eight housing. We didn't have a bed, we had a little air mattress. We were just getting started. And God speaks to us about a special offering like we're doing here and, and to give $500. It was everything we had, I'll never forget. I'm sitting there in the service, pastors up, sharing the vision. And he said, I believe there's people here that can do this amount or that amount. There's many that could do 500. He said that. And I remember sitting there thinking, wow, 500. I hope God speaks to them. <laughs> I didn't want to be one, just whoever they were. I just hope God, God would speak to them. And, and all of a sudden I felt like God said, you're one of them, give 500. I said, oh, 
shoot. <laughs> I started to reach for my wallet. About the time I did, the guy sitting next to me said, I'm one of them. I said, whoo. I guess I overheard God talking to him. <laughs> so I put my wallet back in my pocket. My wife leaned over. She said, is God telling you anything? I said, I don't know. Is he telling you anything? She said, I think we're supposed to give 500. Oh. Shoot. I remember I got my wallet out and I got the envelope, started filling out the envelope and ink was smearing from the tears. You know, so I was crying. God loves a cheerful giver. Whatever. Whatever. I mean, he also loves uncheerful givers, right? He loves everybody. I tell you this, if you're happy every time you give, you probably don't give a lot. There's a lot of times I hadn't been happy. That day I had $503 in my checking account. When you have $503 and God wants 500 of it, willing, yes, obedient, fine. Happy, no. This is everything I've got. People say, you shouldn't cry. I said, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just watering my seed. Just, uh, just, uh, just watered my seed. But, but I, learned, I learned that day when God spoke to my wife and I about giving that $500, I learned this. Every time God speaks to you about a seed, he's got a harvest on his mind. So God was already thinking about how he wanted to bless me. God is already thinking about how he wants to bless you and how he wants to bless your family. But nothing leaves heaven until something leaves earth. And on, on December 10th, we have an opportunity to let go of what's in our hand. And when we let go of what's in our hand, God lets go of what's in his hand. So I'd say the most important thing you can do between now and then is to pray, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want our family to do? Because I know there's something on the other side of that. And I, you don't know what it is. I didn't know what it is. We were in that little apartment, $32,000 in debt. A couple, uh, just a couple weeks later, after God spoke to, spoke to us to do that, my wife went to Walmart one day uh, to get some Walmart stuff, whatever. <laughs> whatever you get at Walmart, toilet paper, toothpaste, you know. And uh, while she's in there, a lady comes up to her with a video camera, asks her and her friend if they'd like to be in a Walmart commercial. They said, come on, what do we have to do? They said, well, you're just going to walk over here and uh, shop for a few minutes. We're going to videotape you shopping. Her, her friend was with her. They said, well, we're going we're to send it up to Chicago. And we got people at 20 Walmarts around the country today looking for two people to be in this commercial. And so they did it. They came home, told me about it. And I kind of, I laughed at them a little bit because, you know, you don't go to Walmart. And people ask you to be in commercials, right? I've, I've been to Walmart a lot. No one's ever asked me to be in a commercial. So anyway, the commercial, uh, uh, we get a call about two days later from Walmart. Out of all the people, her and her friend were chosen to be in a Walmart commercial. And they say, can you be at Walmart Friday morning at 8 o'clock? They get down there. They end up filming this commercial. And at the end of the day, they handed them each a check for $800. Now, I, I call that favor for one thing. It's the first time my wife ever went shopping, came home with more money than she left with. I, they, they said, by the way, this is going to be a national commercial, which means every time it airs, you're going to get paid for it. Can you sign these papers? They signed some papers, and, and uh, they ended up doing this commercial. It aired for 13 weeks. By the end of the first two weeks, we'd already received checks in the mail for over $5,000. When God spoke to us about the 500, you think he didn't already know about the Walmart commercial? But when you let go of what's in your hand, God lets go of what's in his hand. And I think that's why it's so important that we're really praying, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do this day? Because God's got a harvest on the other side of your seed. Anyway, the commercial went on to air for 13 weeks, over $15,000. We got paid. We got, a, we got a thing in the mail from something called the Screen Actors Guild. We didn't even know what it was. We just threw it away. We thought it was junk mail. And because the commercial did so well, she got put in the Screen Actors Guild. We ended up with health insurance for an entire year, paid for by Walmart because the commercial, you just never know. Next time you go to Walmart, you fix your hair, do your makeup. You just, you never know. Every time I'm at Walmart now, when I walk by the security cameras, I'm just never, you probably, 
you probably heard about the little old lady who lived right next door to an atheist and the atheist would always hear her pray. He said, I'm so tired of hearing this lady pray to God. There is no God. One day she was praying for groceries. She didn't have any food. She's praying, God, I need help. I need groceries. And the atheist heard her and thought, I'm going to show her once and for all that there is no God. So he went to the grocery store and he bought a couple bags of groceries. And he came over, he put them on her steps, rang the doorbell, he jumped in the bushes. She came out, saw the groceries. She said, thank you, Lord, for the groceries. The atheist jumped out and said, I got you. God didn't bring you those groceries. I bought those groceries. I brought them, I bought them, I brought them over here. I put them on your steps. God had nothing to do with this. She looked down at her groceries. She looked over that atheist. She said, thank you, Lord, for the groceries and thanks for making the devil pay for it. You just never know. You just never know how God's going to bless you. So I'm telling you, get ready. I'm, I'm telling you, December, December 10th is going to be a big day. So get ready to see what God would have, would have you to do. I, amen? Well, let me give you a couple of uh, principles. Pastor just taught us last week about the importance of principles. And, and he, he told us how principles work wherever you're at, anywhere, anytime, principles work. And so we've been learning as we're going through this 40 days together. And if you don't have your book yet, make sure you get that A Principles to the Abundant Life. It's going to help you. And right in the beginning, we say, hey, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take notes. So if you're taking notes today, if you already filled out that thing and, and signed the commitment, I'm, I'm watching for you. I can, I can see you over at Arrowhead too. I'm watching you. And, uh, oh, Arizona, you think I'm not watching you? I'm watching you too. And even if you're at home just drinking your coffee, pay attention, okay? We're in church. <laughs> These people think they can just stay home and watch on. We're watching you. We can see in your house, and you should have wore something different. Anyway, um, okay, so I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So, so take notes today. I'm going to give you five things. And if you got a, a pen, paper, write them down. If you got your phone, write them down. If you're taking notes, write them down. If you're not taking notes, go ahead and write them down. Because it's going to help you. And, uh, and we said we're going to commit to taking notes. We're going to commit to coming to church. We're going to commit to exercise. Some of y'all signed it and haven't been doing that either. Okay. Um, I got up this morning. I did my part. I ran around the block two or three times. And then I put the block back under my bed. But uh, um, like I told you, that exercise, I've been, I'm working my way to 500, right? I'm a bench, I bench press right now around 3.30 or 4 o'clock, right around that time usually. So I'm going to do it. But, so I'm going to give you five things. We're talking about the abundant life. Here's what it says. I love the way the Bible says this in John chapter 10, verse 10. Of course, it's the scripture that really talks about the abundant life. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible. Oh, man, I'm having so much fun. I'm, I'm, my time is going quick. Here's what it says. John 10, verse 10 in the Amplified Bible. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what the devil does. He wants to steal your dreams, kill your marriage, destroy your, your finances. That's, that's all he's trying to do. But Jesus said, that's not what I came. I came that you may have and enjoy life. Not that you would just have life, but that you would have it and enjoy it. There's a lot of people that are just trying to make it through life, just, just kind of trying to get through just if I get through today maybe tomorrow no he wants us to have and enjoy life say enjoy life have it in abundance to the full till it overflows abundant means plentiful how many like to have more joy than you have right now how many like to have more peace than you have right now how many like to have more love in your home than you have right now how many like to have more victory than you have right now yeah how many like to have more money than you have right now Wow, look at all you selfish people. Just, just all want more. No, he said, I came that you would have an abundant, a plentiful life. He came to give you joy. He came to give you peace. He came to give you victory. All those things, God came to give those to you. Pastor said last week, we are not victims, but we are victors. So I'm going to give you some secrets here to being victorious. Uh, well, they're not really secrets because they're in the Bible, so you can read them. But if, if, if you haven't been reading your Bible, now they're secrets to you. 
and you check that thing saying you'd read your Bible, we're watching you. So these are some secrets. They're not, like I said, not secrets, but victor they'll make you victorious. So we'll just call them victorious secrets. Okay. How do you enjoy the abundant life? We're learning about it. We're doing it together. 40 days, these eight principles. But how do we enjoy it? How do we get the most out of it? So we're going to take the word enjoy, and I'm going to teach you five things. E N J O Y. So just write them down your page like that. And it's kind of, uh, they call it an acrostic. And I'm going to give you just a word or give you a little statement for each of those five things to help you remember. It, th those kind of things always help me to remember because I, I forget. I mean, message is so good, then you get home, like, but when you write it down, it helps you to remember. And then you got to go back and watch it because this will be on YouTube or pastor's message every week will be on YouTube. Go back that week. How many have ever watched a movie three times? Same movie three. How many saw things the third time you didn't see the first two times? You're like, I never saw that. The same thing with a message. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing. And so you go back, get your notes, watch the message again, and you go, oh, I didn't catch that the first time. That was good. And so that's, what, that's why we do all this stuff to help you, okay? And, and so this is going to help you remember, E-N-J-O-Y. It reminds me of these two guys were talking one day, and, and, and one said, hey, my anniversary is coming up. He goes, have you been any place lately? You know any good places? I want to take my wife somewhere real special, somewhere romantic. And the other guy said, oh, man, I just went to a restaurant recently. Me and my wife, it was the most romantic restaurant I've ever been to. He said, that sounds perfect for my anniversary. He said, oh, it, it would be perfect. I was thinking it would be perfect for an anniversary. The food was phenomenal. That was some of the best food I've ever had. And the, and the service was incredible. I mean, they were there. If you just thought of something, they had it for you. It's amazing. He goes, it would be perfect for an anniversary. He said, it sounds perfect. He said, what's the name of the place? And the other guy said, um, I don't remember the name of it. He said, what do you mean you, don't you just got me all excited about this to take my wife and you don't remember the name because I can't remember the name of it. He said, you got to remember. He said, okay, wait a minute, wait, I think I got it. Uh, what's that flower, um, the, the, the long stem, the thorns, it's red. And the guy's like, a rose? He said, yeah, hold on. Hey, Rose, what's the name of that restaurant that we went to? Okay. This is to help you remember, okay? So uh, uh, sometimes you just need a little help. The letter E, the letter E, let's start with that. Experience, if you're gonna enjoy life, you've gotta learn to experience the moment. The Bible says in Psalms 118, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, today. He didn't say, hey, yesterday was the day I made. I hope you rejoiced. He didn't say, hey, tomorrow will be the day I make. Make plans now to rejoice. He said, this is the day. Today is all you've got. Well, you don't have a yesterday. Yesterday's over. Can't do anything about it. Tomorrow is not even here. All you have is today. If you don't learn how to make the most out of today, this is the day that the Lord has made. It took you your entire lifetime to get to today. Think about that. It took me 29 years or, or so to get to, to you like 29. He's 29? That's the worst looking 29 year old I've ever seen. Why do we do that? You ever wonder that why people make up these young numbers? Like I used to do that, 29. They're like, you look horrible for 29. So now I go, I'm 72. They're like, wow. You look phenomenal for 72. Yeah, I'm only 52, but for 72, I look really, really good, right? But it took me my entire lifetime to get to today. You got to make the most out of today. This is the day, and it says it's your choice to rejoice. I heard this phrase recently. They said, wherever you're at, be all there. Wherever you're at, get the most out of, savor the day. Don't just gulp it down. Don't just rush through it. Get the most out of today. And most people who are so busy doing this or that, we don't even get the most out of the moments that we have. Uh, we'll, we're going to talk a little bit more about that tonight, uh, uh, of how to get the most out of the moment, because it's all you've got. It's all I've got is, is, is today, is, is the moment. And Susan said, well, uh, well um, there's, a, there's a new term in business psychology 
right now called AWP, stands for Absent While Present. And they're talking about how many people, even though they're there, they're not really there, right? They're at work, but while they're at work, they're busy on Facebook or they're on Instagram or you're on a date night, you're on your phone the whole time. You're not really there. You're, you're present, but you're absent at the same time. Some of you even right now, you're here, but you've been, you're on Instagram, you're doing this or that. And, and, and when you're at work, work. When you're on a date, be on a date. You're not supposed to be on Instagram, okay? Now, if you're on Instagram, make sure you follow me while you're on it, okay? It's, it's at Dr. Dave Martin. At, okay. but, but no, no. Um, and then get back to work. But wherever you're at, be all there. Make the most out of the moments. Moments should be tasted. Moments should be enjoyed. Someone said, well, this is the day. Some people say, don't you ever wake up on the wrong side of the bed? No. Nope. When I get up, this is the day the Lord has made. Whatever side I get up on is the right side because it's my choice to rejoice. Yeah. He said, do you ever wake up grumpy? I'm like sometimes I wake up grumpy. Sometimes I let her sleep. But it's a choice. Happiness is in the now. It took you your entire lifetime to get to today. Enjoy today. The letter E, experience the moment. The letter N, the letter N, never settle. Never settle. It is, it is so, at, let me ask you a question. Do dogs, do dogs like bones? Yeah? Yeah, everyone would say, yeah, dogs love bones. No, I think dogs like steak, but they settle for the bones. How often do we settle for less than what God has for us? Don't let the devil feed you baloney when God's got a T-bone steak, right? God has so much more for you and we settle. There is greatness that God has put on the inside of you from the time you were born. Don't settle for trying to be something God didn't create you to be. I gotta be me. Look, here's what it says in Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. Let me just tell you, God has plans for you. And its plans is to be who God created you to be. I can't be you. You can't be me. I can't be, I can't be pastor. You guys, pastor is one of the best teachers. I know you guys, I can't be him though. I could try. I can't be that good. I just got to be me. Right, I could try to take my jacket off and look that good and my shirt, but it wouldn't look that good, so I leave my jacket on because I got to be me. A friend of mine wrote a book, You Were Born an Original, Don't Die a Copy. Quit trying to be someone else. Uh, you, the, your flaws, yeah, we all have some flaws. And your flaws do not prevent God from using you. Right? You, they exist to motivate I have some flaws. It, 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 they exist to motivate my pursuit of him because I know I can't do it without him. So we've all made some. How many have ever made a mistake? Yeah. If you've never made a mistake, you probably never made anything. We've all made some mistakes. We all need a, 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 to, to get back up sometimes. And so just the fact that you exist excites God. The fact that you woke up, this it excites God. Never consult those who have not discovered the greatness within you. Don't worry about what everyone else thinks. What people think about you is none of your business. What does God think about you? What are the gifts has God put in you? He said, I, from the very beginning, when I formed you, I knew all about you, and I had great plans for you, but you don't understand all the things I've done, all the mistakes I've made. My goodness, we could just take a list of our heroes in the Bible. And look, they were some pretty jacked up people. But yet God still used them. So next time you think God can't use you. My goodness, Noah, he was a drunk. Abraham was too old. Moses was a stutterer. Jacob was a liar. David was an adulterer. Samson had long hair. Job filed bankruptcy. <coughs> Leah was ugly. 
We're not judging Leah. It's in the Bible. It's in there. I've read it. The Samaritan woman was divorced. Huh. More than once. God still used her. I got to my hotel last night. Lady on the elevator, she looked at me. She goes, you look like my third husband. I was like, I thought about that Samaritan woman. I was like, wow. I was like, how many times have you been married? And she said, twice. Uh, anyway. So we all get that later. But uh, um, how about this? Lazarus was dead and God still used him. So the next time you think God can't use you, he's not finished with you yet. Do not settle for less than what God has for you. God never gives up. God never quits looking at you. God never changes his plans about you. His plans for you are for good and to prosper you and to give you hope and to give you a future. The letter J, the letter J. Oh my goodness. Journey with mentors. Journey with mentors. What, 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 what do I mean by that? Uh, sit at the feet of others that you can learn from. There, there's a couple different ways to get wisdom. Uh, number one, you can get it from mistakes. How many have ever learned from your mistakes? Yeah, well, that's, a, that's, that's a way to learn. It's the slowest way to learn is to learn from your mistakes. A, a quicker way to learn would be to learn from someone else's mistakes. That's called mentorship. If I could learn from pastor's mistakes, it would save me from having to make the same mistakes. So God gives us pastors to mentor us, to, to help us, to teach us so that we don't have to make the same mistake. I called one of my mentors the other day. I said, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? He said, ah, uh, I wouldn't do that if I was you. I said, why not? I think it's a great idea. He said, yeah, he said, so did I. <laughs> He'd already done it. What I was planning to do, he'd already done, found out it didn't work. He just saved me three months of work, $50,000 of investment. Why? That's called mentorship. People say there's no shortcut to success. You got a shortcut right over here on the front row, right? Tonight, you get back here tonight, we'll give you some under. How many like to be doing better than you're doing right now? Let me see your hand. In some area of your life, you like to be doing better. If you're not doing as well as you'd like to be doing, it just means there's something you don't know. If you're not doing as well as you'd like to be doing, it just means there's something you don't know. When I heard that, I went from being a know-it-all to being a learn-it-all. Obviously, there were some things I didn't know, and that's where I began to get hungry for wisdom. The Bible said it's the principal thing. Whatever you do, get wisdom. Proverbs 1 verse 5 said a wise person will increase in learning. So tonight, we're going to have an opportunity for some wise people to increase in learning. Now, if that's you, you want to be doing better than you're doing right now, tonight would be a great night for you to come back to church. Now, we, we'll, we'll know who, who's who by who comes back. That'll be easy. But I'd like to be doing better than I'm doing right now. Yeah, but I didn't realize that was going to be on TV tonight. So I think I'm just going to stay home and watch that. Tonight is going to be, tonight will be a great, I, I believe tonight could be a real major turning point for some people. And if, if you can rearrange your schedule, get back here tonight, make an investment. It's going to be an investment. Take a drive. It's going to take time out of your schedule, but come back here for 90 minutes tonight. Now, tonight's not for everybody because not everybody's into wisdom. We can tell. But if you're into to wisdom tonight. How many, how many, any business owners in here? Any business owners, entrepreneurs? Let me see. Oh, wow, a lot in this service. Tonight would be a, you, you need to be here tonight for sure. Uh, anybody work in sales? Anybody, any sales people? Oh, wow, a lot of people in sales. Yeah, tonight, legal or illegal sales, either one, just get here tonight. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be worth it. Uh, any managers? Anybody, any managers? All oh, managers, this would be perfect for you to be here tonight. And if you work, we'll get them here. Any, oh, anybody got a job? Jobs. You'd be great to be here tonight. If you got a job, that'd be good. Need a job. Anybody need a job? Okay, perfect. Tonight, breathing. Anybody breathing right now? Okay. If you raise your hand to any of those things, 
I would come tonight. If you're one of the campuses close by, I mean, come on, you can get over here. Arizona may be hard for you guys, but Arrowhead, come on, seriously, get here. Okay, and, and so tonight's going to be a, a great, great night. And if you just skipped church and watched online, you can come tonight because you didn't come this morning. So, And we're going to learn. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna grow and learn together. If you want tomorrow to be different than today, learn something today that will make tomorrow different. If you go into tomorrow with the same information you have today, you won't really have a tomorrow. You'll just have a longer today. So we want to learn some things tonight. We're going to get into some, some mentorship, some coaching that's going to help you. And I believe, I believe it's going to be well worth your, your time to get back here uh, tonight. The greatest investment you'll ever make is the investment you make in yourself. So get here, uh, get, get here tonight. The letter O, let me give you these last two. The letter O, order your thoughts. Order your thoughts. How many would admit at some point in your life you've limited yourself by your own thinking, your own mentality has limited you. Yeah, now the key to the abundant life, and Pastor talked about this, I think not last Sunday, but Sunday before last, talking about our mindset and having an abundant mindset. You gotta change the way you think. You gotta change the way that you, that you look at things. So I'm just gonna give you kind of a little uh, um, check up from the neck up. I wanted to get into more of this this morning, but tonight we'll get into it. Uh, Cause sometimes we just got some stinking thinking I gotta go to the dentist next week to get my teeth cleaned. And the thing I hate the most about that is when they get the dental floss and they start digging in the back of my teeth. And, and I'm like, why? Ah, it just hurts and they're digging down in there. But the purpose is it's for good, right? It's to get anything that's stuck in there out of there. And, and so tonight I wanna kinda, um, if I could, kinda like a dentist, except with your head. I, wish, I just wanna open up the top of your head and instead of dental floss, get some mental floss and get in your brain a little bit and get some stuff in there that's stuck, get it out so that you can start thinking right. And if you get your thinking right, you'll get your believing right. And if you get your believing right, you'll start getting your receiving right. And then you'll start living the abundant life. The rest of your life really could be the best of your life. So we're going to get a little checkup from the neck up. Sometimes you don't even know what's hurting you. And you just need to, I grew up in Mississippi. Not a, I didn't grow up around the smartest people in the world. And uh, uh, that's, what, that's what got me into wisdom. I didn't want to turn out like them. You know anybody like that could use a little more wisdom? Don't point at them. I saw, I saw that. This, this, this kind of people I grew up around is one of my buddies. He went to the, the doctor. He said, doctor, I'm in pain. Went for his checkup, right? He said, I'm in pain everywhere. The doctor said, where's it hurt? He said, everywhere. He goes, how does it hurt? He goes, I'm telling you, I touched my shoulder. It hurts. I touched my knee. It hurts. Touched my waist. It hurt my, my head. Everywhere I touch, it hurts. Doctor said, all right, let me do an exam. He examined him, did some x-rays. He said, I found out the problem. He said, what's the problem? He said, problem is your fingers broke. So here's the checkup. We're going to get the checkup tonight, and we're going to get into to, to some of this. I think outside of salvation, the greatest way to turn your life around is to change your thinking. And the moment you begin to think differently, different things begin to happen. Because life will not allow you to enjoy more success than you think you deserve. You can't enjoy the abundant life if you don't think you deserve the abundant life. But yet, Jesus, when he died on the cross... He paid way too high of a price just for salvation. There's so much more that's covered. That. Now, if he just did it so he could get saved, it'd be worth it all. But he covered so much more in that, the abundant life that he came to give you. And so we're going to get into some of that t tonight. Because what does what the, uh, the Bible says in um, Romans 12, verse 2? Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you. It means don't be conformed. Don't, don't fashion yourself after the world. The world is a place of struggle and mediocrity and disappointment. But he said, don't conform yourself to how the world does it. Be transformed to how the kingdom does it. And when you're transformed, it says, let God transform you into a new person. Who's going to transform you? God. God's going to transform us into a new person. How? By, what did it say? 
by changing the way you think. You're transformed into a new person by changing the way you think. He didn't say you're going to be transformed by serving more, by coming to church more, by giving more, by praying more, by going. No, he, he said you're transformed by changing the way you think. Now, I think you should come to church more. I think you should serve more. And I think you should give more. But transformation comes by changing the way you you think all those others are important to our Christian life and our walk, but if we could change the way we think, it could change. If you change the way you look at things, the things that you're looking at will change. A transformation is an ugly butter, an ugly caterpillar becomes a beautiful butterfly. It is transformed, and I think when you change the way you think, your life is transformed. A metamorphosis changes. People are like, "What? You don't even look the same anymore because you've been trained." I know a lot of times in the Spirit-filled church, we thought that scripture said, be transformed by the removal of your mind. <laughs> but, it, but actually, I looked, it says by the renewal. Uh, it's changing the way that you, that you think. Anyway, we're, we'll talk about that. I think it's one of the greatest, most positive things you can do is change the way you, the, the way you think. And the conversations you have um, with God are important, but the conversations you have outside of your conversations with God, the most important conversations you'll ever have are the conversations you have with yourself. So tonight we'll talk a little bit about your, your declarations as, as well, because we serve in Ephesians 3.20, God. Uh, let me give you one last one. Uh, the letter, the letter Y, Y, yield, yield to maintenance. Yield to maintenance. What, what, is, what does that mean? Um, I think part of the enjoying the abundant life is, well, part of what he says. Even God gave us an example. On the seventh day, he rested. Every now and then, you got to take a break. You got to get some rest. You got to rejuvenate and replenish. And tired eyes rarely see a bright future. When fatigue walks in, faith walks out. And so it's so important that you rest, that you, that you take time to rejuvenate and, and to, to uh, and I don't know what, re, what rejuvenates you. I mean, different people, I got a friend who, when he, he likes to take a day every now and then and skydive, that's relaxing to him. I don't find anything relaxing about jumping out of an airplane. I want to be in the airplane. I want to stay in the airplane, right? But that's what, me, I like water. Uh, you know, how I many, how I many like going to the beach, just looking at the ocean? That's relaxing. Isn't it? That's nice. It could be, it could be an ocean. It could be a lake. How I many like water? How I many you're like me? It's like, that's relaxing. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be a lake. Sometimes I just fill up my bathtub and sit on the edge. Just. But you got to find stuff that relaxes you and, and rejuvenates you. You know, the cars, the cars that last the longest and are the most reliable are the ones that have regularly scheduled maintenance, right? And so if we're gonna run the distance, if we're gonna live this abundant life, we're gonna have to have some regularly scheduled maintenance. You're gonna have to take some time to, to relax. I, I heard a, 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 about these two guys down in Louisiana. They were, one of them was having trouble selling his truck, he wanted to sell his truck, but had 200,000 miles on it. Had it for sale for, uh, for $1,500, but it had 200,000 miles on it. His friend said, you know what? That's probably why you're having a hard time selling it. You got so many miles on it. He said, what I'd do if I was you, I'd turn that odometer back. He said, if you turn that thing back to about 50,000 miles, it'll be much easier to sell. A few days later, they were talking. He said, hey, have you sold your truck yet? He said, oh, no. He said, I, he said, I decided not to sell it. He said, why? He said, it's only got 50,000 miles on it now. He said, I, I told you I didn't grow up around the smartest people, but uh, even Jesus understood. He told the disciples, hey, let's go. Let's come away from the crowd for a little bit. Let's take a little break. Let's, let's, let's rest. If you're going to run the race, if you're, going to, if you're going to go the long haul, if you're going to live the abundant life, you got to yield, yield to maintenance. Oh, gosh. Tonight, we'll get into a bunch more stuff. We're going to really get into some of these principles. Like I said, Pastor talked to us last week about the power of principles and the importance of learning. If tomorrow's going to be different than today, you've got to learn something today. Tonight, we're going to learn some powerful principles and some real practical things that will help you 
I learned there's a big difference between the person of Jesus and the principles of Jesus. The person of Jesus prepares you for heaven. The principles of Jesus prepare you for earth. There are ungodly people who use godly principles and achieve ungodly results. While the church a lot of times we don't know the principles or we ignore the principles. I've been on, on tour, uh, I was on tour for about six or seven years uh, with the guys from Shark Tank. Uh, we were on a tour, it's the largest business seminars in America called Get Motivated. And, and I was on tour with the guys from Shark Tank. I don't know if you've ever seen that show, um, Shark Tank. But th there's a guy on there named Damon John. And, and Damon and I were talking backstage one day and, and I said, you know, all these principles that you teach, uh, they're all in the Bible. He said, they're not in the Bible. I said, yeah, they're all in the Bible. He said, seriously, I said, yeah, like you just talked about your new company or your company that you started years ago called FUBU and, you, and you, you wrote down all your dreams and goals. And you said, when you write down your dreams and goals, you dramatically increase the likelihood of accomplishing them. If you just write them down, I said, that's so true. So important, it's in the Bible. He said, that's not in the Bible. I said, sure it is. And so I, I showed him Habakkuk chapter two, write the vision, make it plain so you can run with it, right? Write down your goals, write down your vision. He said, that is in the Bible. He said, it's all in there. So tonight we're going to dig out some of those principles uh, that I believe will help you live a much better life. If you want tomorrow to be different than today, learn something today. So get back here tonight. If you love Jesus, lift your right hand and you're coming back at six. Good, good. That's almost everybody. So you're going to want to get here early. But let me pray for you real quick just before we, just before we go. Bow your heads all across the room at our other locations. If you're watching online, we never want to close a service here at The Way without giving people an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. More important than everything else, the key to beginning the abundant life is beginning a life with Jesus. God loved you so much that he gave his very best just for you. And life goes better. I promise you, life goes better when you put God first. In this room, there's hundreds of people that will tell you, Life has gone better for them when they put God first. And if you've never made the decision to put God first, we want to give you an opportunity to do that today. Or, or maybe, you're, maybe you're watching us online. Maybe you're in the building. And you're sitting there saying, you know what? At one point, God was first place in my life. But right now, he's, he's not. I've allowed some other things. Maybe it's a job. Maybe it's a relationship. But your priorities. God's not number one right now. Life goes better when you put God first. So I want to give you an opportunity today to say, yes, I'm ready to put God first or I'm ready to put God back first place. I'm going to count to three. You already know if this is you. I don't need to take a long time. If you say, Dave, that's me. When you pray that prayer, just pray for me. If you're online, maybe pop up a little hand emoji in the chat. Say, that's me. Pray for me. If you're at one of our other locations, just when I count to three, just lift your hand real quick and let me pray for you. One, Never made a decision to put God first. I'm ready to do it today. Two, I want to put God back first place in, in my life. If that's you, three, let me see your hand. Come on, all across the room. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Online, God bless you. The Bible says that if you will believe in your heart and you'll say with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord, you'll be saved. I want everyone to say those words. Everyone that can hear my voice. Not just those who lift their hands. Let's all say it together. Say, Jesus Christ is my Lord. Best decision you'll ever make is to put him first. If you made that decision today, they're going to come give you some instructions. We want to pray with you and believe with you. But I'm telling you, if you said yes today, give us 12 months here at The Way. Every chance you can, get back get back here, get back to your location. Uh, get online. If you're, if you're in the area of one of our campuses, locations, get out there. Give us 12 months. Get your kids here. Uh, get your youth in youth. I promise you 12 months from now, you'll say that was the best decision that I ever made. We celebrate you again. Come on, one more time. Put your hands together for those that said yes to Jesus today. Come on, why don't we all stand to our feet and give God some praise. How many received that word today? What an awesome word that was. For those that raise your hands, can I see your hand one more time? You said, I want to give my life to Jesus. Just pop your hand up one more time. Look at all those that made a decision today to give their life to Jesus. Can you do me one more favor? If your hand went up, we have a team up here that wants to pray with you. 
we love to congratulate you. Can you make your way out of your seat? Just down to the aisle and make your way forward. And we're going to shake your hand and congratulate you and give you some resources. And church, why don't we get excited for every soul that's giving their life to Jesus today. Come on, let's clap. Let's get excited. Let's get pumped up because this is what it's all about right here. Those that are giving their life to Jesus today. Come on, they're still coming forward. We can still clap for them as they make their way forward. We're proud of you. We're proud of you. Amen. You want to, uh, to, oh, perfect. Awesome. Great. Praise God. This is awesome. And church, remember, tonight, there's going to be no other opportunity for us to get tonight what, what is being offered. It's not being live streamed. You will not be able to stream it on YouTube. It is not being recorded. We're not going to post it later. This is something that he does. He's going to give this to us as a gift. This is a gift to us. Let, let's not reject the gift. Let's receive it tonight. Let's, let's do whatever we can to be here. Let's fill the house. Invite colleagues. Invite friends. Invite business partners. Let's be there tonight. Let's do whatever we can to make it there tonight. All right. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. And let's sit, repeat this after me. Say, Jesus, thank you for giving your life for me. Forgive me of my sin. I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose from the dead so that I can be saved. From this moment forward, my life belongs to you. I'm doing things different now. I'm living for you. Give me strength. Give me peace. Give me hope and help me to walk with you for the rest of my life. Lead me, Holy Spirit. Fill me and guide me. From this moment forward, my life belongs to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's give God one more shout of praise, church. We love you so much. Remember, be here tonight at 6 p.m. We're going to be here. It's a seminar. It's not going to be... Too, so much of a service style to be a seminar. So come with a notepad, come with a pen and a paper, come ready to learn. If you need prayer, come forward. We'd love to pray with you. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday and we will see you tonight.